The New York Giants are back following their Week 13 bye to take on a red-hot Green Bay Packers team on Monday Night Football. We have your key storylines, matchups, and more to get you ready on this special crossover edition of Locked on Giants, Locked on Packers, coming your way next. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special crossover edition Locked on Giants, Locked on Packers. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, Locked on Giants. And Packers fans, you recognize the guy on the, on my side there, Peter Bukowski, host of Locked On Packers. We're here to give you everything you need to know about the Monday night matchup between the Red Hot Green Bay Packers and the back from the bye week, New York Giants. And Peter, my friend, good to see you as always. You as well. Can't wait to, to get it started. Appropriate that uh, right now in uh, the New York area, snowing uh, because the last time Z- these two teams played at MetLife, we had that glorious snow game and you and I got to watch the game sitting next to each other. Yes, we did. We did. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get that same opportunity, but you know, we're still going to be there in spirit and we still have everything you guys and gals need to know about the game. And we're going to kick things off with the key storylines and Peter, you know, I'm going to ask you since you're the visitor, I think that one of the key storylines that I know I'm interested in has been the development of Jordan love. Mm. He, I think he's in his third season. Now he's really starting to come into his own. Where have you seen him take the biggest leap? I think the, the command that he has of the offense and you hear Matt LaFleur talk about this all the time. It's, it's not just, all of the intricacies of, okay, this read, I go one to two to three here, or if they play defense, we can to this play. It's let's get, let's getting in and out of the huddle a little bit faster when you need to pick up the energy or it's finding a, a, a check down on a play just so you can get AJ Dillon involved a, a little bit. Those kinds of little things, getting more comfortable facing pressure. I, we assume Wink Martindale is going to do what Wink Martindale does and send the pressure. Steve Spagnuolo did it. Brian Flores, interestingly, didn't do it a ton um, with the Vikings a couple weeks ago. So uh, the the Jordan Love development, it's apt, I think, because Brian Gutekind said last year, Patricia, that Jordan Love has shown the Packers everything he can show them in practice. But there's so much that you gain from playing in the games that he can't do anymore in practice. It all has to come in the games now. And I think now you know, 11 games in, 12 games in, he's starting to to just, the game is slowing down a little bit for him and that's allowing him to play a little bit more freely. Uh, and and you're seeing it manifest itself. He's he's playing with a ton of confidence right now. Hey, I can fit this ball in. And he does, you know, the throw to Christian Watson um, on, on, the, on the backside uh, on that touchdown against the Chiefs. Like those are throws that he probably doesn't even attempt in week five. But now he's like, oh yeah, I can get this. And Christian Watson can go up and get it. So that's a huge thing. I, I assume for you, quarterback, also one of the big storylines here uh, with uh, with Mr. DeVito himself, uh, not uh, not Danny. We got Tommy this week. We got the uh, the Italians, the Italian stallion there, Tommy yeah. DeVito, named starting quarterback by head coach. Get some Brian Gabagool Lee. in here, some some uh, you know pursuit. Let's go. Yeah, chicken cutlets, you know, like with vodka sauce. I still haven't tried it yet. I, I I promised him I would try it. I mean, I'm, I usually do chicken cutlets with marinara sauce, but Tommy DeVito chosen as the starting quarterback for the Giants coming out of the bye week. Uh, Tyrod Taylor is expected to be activated off IR. Dable made the decision to announce it yesterday. Um, obviously, Tyrod Taylor disappointed, but look, Tommy DeVito... And you could say, yeah, it's come against two bad teams and the the commanders and the Patriots. But look, he's on a roll. He's in a groove. Um, you know, he hasn't really done anything to lose the job. He has also galvanized a Giants team that, you know, has just been very sluggish 
for lack of a better term. Now, the offense hasn't exactly been a juggernaut. They had, what, 31 points against the Commanders, which, you know, the Commanders defense having some problems. But I think mm-hmm. they only had like 10 points against the Patriots where you would have thought they would have really, you know, opened things up. But still, a win is a win. DeVito still in the saddle and uh, will be in the saddle until further notice. And I think this week against the, the Packers, going to face a pretty good test, I think, against that defense, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and and particularly the pass rush. I mean, I'm sure we'll we'll get into this when we do matchups, but um, I, I, the number I saw was was something like 30 sacks in in the, the five games that he's played. I mean, it is a lot, and and that's not on him. It was a Daniel Jones problem before that, and a Terod Taylor before that, because this offensive line has faced a lot of challenges. And when you see, you know, the Packers getting three sacks on Patrick Mahomes in the first half on Sunday, I think that tells you a lot because Patrick Mahomes does not take sacks. No team had gotten him for three in a game and they got him for three and a half. They dominated the Detroit Lions at the point of attack in the pass rush game. No one has done that to Detroit all season. And so this this front is playing really, really good football. And I think that when you you look at, okay, first year starter, that's going to be the key here is can they protect? And, And you mentioned the 31 points against the commanders. Okay, but against the Patriots, 10 against the Cowboys, 17, against Vegas, six. So other than that one big outburst, this offense has not been producing very well when they've had uh, Tommy DeVito under center. Yeah, and a big problem for Tommy DeVito has been he holds the ball too long. You know, with him, it's all or nothing. It's either throw the ball deep or just sit there and take a sack. But the good news for Giant fans is that he hasn't coughed the ball up. That's key. You know, he's been under a lot of duress, the Giants offensive line, I, I don't remember the number, but I'm pretty sure they're, they've they been charged with the most sacks in the NFL. Not all on them. A lot of it, and in this case, is on DeVito. You can see that he's holding the ball over 2.5 seconds, which you don't want to see your quarterback do. So, you know, the hope is that as DeVito gets more comfortable in this offense, um, that he, he gets rid of the ball quicker, makes faster decisions, processes faster, and that's going to be tricky because, again, the Packers defense, very uh, sophisticated. They do a lot of things that can confuse, especially a young guy uh, who is is an undrafted free agent who really wasn't supposed to be at this point, you know, where he's starting games. But this is yeah. all this is all vodka sauce off the chicken cutlets with Tommy, <laughs> you know, uh, this experience that well, he's getting. Sure. What, what worked in the Washington game that, that you know, you, like – it seemed like they still had a pretty good plan the next week. He had a nice game, I thought, against a very, very good Patriots defense. But what worked so well in that Commanders game? Yeah, I think they kept it simple, to be honest with you. Just keep it simple. Don't do anything too complex. Um, you know, I, I know he he's had more success throwing, I think. I know outside the numbers, and I want to say to the right side, I, I don't remember mm-hmm. the exact stats, but, you know, they've been going to an area of the field where DeVito has had the most success in his games. And I can break that down, you know, uh, in a future episode, but um, so they just, you know, you don't want to complicate things because when you have a young quarterback, you know, you, you kind of live within the game plan. You're not expecting him to suddenly know the entire playbook. I mean, DeVito does know the playbook, but you're not putting too much on his plate. And I think by keeping it simple and just keeping in his ear, you know, he's Dable's been in his ear, Kafka's been in his ear, Shea Tierney, the quarterback's coach has been in his ear, Daniel Jones has been in his ear. This kid's getting a lot of support and it's paying off for him. Yeah. Saquon Barkley was also the leading target getter in that game. And so uh, the quarterback's best friend often is get the ball to your most explosive playmaker and just let him go to work. That's something that, that we're definitely going to talk about here uh, when we dig into the matchups because the Packers are going to have to tackle Saquon Barkley in space. That was a problem for them last year when these two teams matched up and the Packers blew a double-digit lead. They <laughs> they cannot let that happen again. And so tackling Saquon Barkley, that's going to be job one, I think, in this game for the Packers. Yep, and we're going to talk about matchups right after we take a quick break. Hey, Giant fans, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, don't you? Well, that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. I myself have used LinkedIn Jobs to find aspiring writers for the Giants country site that I run over on SI's Fan Nation 
And the process is not only super easy, but a big time saver. Simply add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize whom you'd like to interview and hire. So don't spend time sorting through endless resumes and dead-end leads. Put LinkedIn jobs to work through you today for free by visiting linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Terms and conditions apply. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked in, uh, Locked on Giants, Locked on Packers. I'm Patricia Chain, a host of Locked on Giants, and he is Peter Bukowski, host of Locked on Packers. And Peter, let's talk matchups. You, you know, you, you kind of jumped the gun on me a little bit because I was going to say one of the key matchups for the Giants is going to be Saquon versus a Packers run defense, which has struggled. And I want to ask you, what do you think – has been at the core of that Packers defense, that run defense, why they have struggled so much? Well, I think part of it is philosophy. They would much rather say, we're not going to let you beat us deep. We're not going to let you beat us over the top. And so that's a, that means a lot of two deep safeties. That means a lot of um, looks that start as two deep safeties, but end up being single high safeties. But if you rotate the wrong way, uh, you might rotate yourself out of a gap. And, and they've also... This season, Patricia, in an effort to try and shore up that that run defense, they've tried to start slanting sort of some some twists and stunts that are aimed at just causing disruption and and creating some different looks for offensive lines. Um, but if you slant the wrong way, or you have Kenny Clark, for example, taking a risk and shooting a gap, now you're a gap short or you're a half gap short, and it seems like the teams have consistently been able to take advantage. I will say the run defense has gotten better. Um, over the last month, the the Isaiah Pacheco week that they had last week, notwithstanding, but I think that's a great example of what the Packers are are willing to do, and and that is okay. Yes, Patrick Mahomes um, is is job one in any Chiefs game, and they did their job. Patrick Mahomes, two hundred ten yards with a pick. That's that's doing your job. Isaiah Pacheco, if he's going to have eighteen carries for a buck ten and a score, you're going to say okay, go go. If that's how you want to live. Um, where I have struggled with this, Patricia, is they they don't adjust well. And one of, honestly, and, and all due respect to Joe Barry, who's a professional and forgotten more about football than I will ever know. When he said last week or last year against the Giants, they booted and play action Daniel Jones much more than we expected. What did you expect then? Because that was the whole offense last year. And I just, I didn't understand going into a game like we, you and I talked about this offline because I was so just like gobsmacked when he said this, uh, because that was, that was how they beat the Packers and it was how they beat everybody else all season. And, and that was true before they played and it was true after they played. And so the adjustments, it's like, if the initial plan isn't there and they've had some really good plans, you go back to the Vikings game last year where they took Justin Jefferson out with double teams and Jerry Alexander and all that stuff. Like they can put together a really good plan, but it's like when plan a doesn't work. They don't have a great plan B oftentimes. And so that's the that's the big problem right now with Joe Barry. The good news is the front is playing so, so, so well, especially rushing the passer. It just like it just doesn't matter in a lot of these games because if you can't throw it, if you don't have time to throw it, especially down the field, I just don't know how you're going to be able to be consistent enough on offense. And and I don't I don't mean just you, the Giants. I mean like any team. And we saw it with the Chiefs and the Lions the last two weeks, two of the best offenses in the league. Yeah, and you know, speaking of throwing the ball, I mean, when I look at the matchups, obviously I got to look up front. I got to look at the trenches, the offensive line, particularly the interior. Um, off also at at uh, right tackle, it looks like Evan Neal will not be back this week. Uh, Andrew Thomas is still hurting, but he'll play. And, you know, you have a, a, a leaky offensive line uh, combined with a young quarterback who, as I mentioned before, tends to hold the ball a little too long. And then you throw in some of the stunts and twists that that uh, the Packers are known to do. And who knows? I mean, it, it could be a, a free-for-all <laughs> in the passing well, game. And they, so. and they already have, what, Justin Pugh off the bench, off, right. off the off, street, straight basically. Straight off the couch. Uh, and so who is going to play right tackle then? What is the plan? Tyree Phillips will probably get the, get the start there. He's been starting there the last few. All right. Well, uh, meet Rashawn Gary, who has been absolutely on a tear mm -hmm. 
uh, since he came yep. back from ACL. He's been unbelievable. Yep. And that's he's the guy that normally lines up on that offense's right side. So it's going to be a steady diet of that guy. Um, Lucas Van Ness had his best game last week as a pro. Still learning, you know, still learning how to use his hands. But his closing speed, and we saw Patrick Mahomes does not get sacked. He does not take sacks. Even when there's pressure, he does not take sacks. He finds, he by by pure prestidigitation, he finds a way to get out and do something. And Lucas Van Ness got him in the red zone. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this Packers front, they've got a lot of guys. Carl Brooks, the rookie from Bowling Green, has been outstanding. Kenny Clark has been deep, deep in his bag, like like Dexter Lawrence levels of, yeah, I'm a nose tackle, but I can in, just completely wreck your game as a pass rusher and a penetrator. So that I think that's going to be a big part of what you see here. I expect the Giants, heavy play action, move the pocket, and a lot of, let's just dump the ball to Saquon, quick throws, screens, um, maybe a trick play or two. Let's just, get, let's just have a little bit of fun. Um, let's flip this around. Jordan Love, who we talked about at the top, one of the best stretches of his, no, the best, unequivocally, the best stretch of his uh, NFL career. Wink Martindale was not afraid to come after Aaron Rodgers last year. I do not expect him to be afraid to come after Jordan Love. Um, and that has worked so far. My question is, what if they can't stop A.J. Dillon in this running attack because this is the 30th ranked run defense by DVOA? Um, and that was a big reason that they beat the chiefs was they couldn't stop AJ Dillon. And then the Packers play action them to death. Yeah. If that happens, uh, it's going to be a long night for the Giants. <laughs> suffice to say, um, look, you know, sometimes wink has been known to give up the run and in, in an effort to, you know, rattle the quarterback, you know, yeah. he, he has said it, you know, that there have been times when you look at the running yardage, after a game and you say, Oh my God, the run defense didn't do such a great job. And he'll say, Oh, but you know what? That was by design. We were more focused on the passing game. Mm -hmm. Now you look at the Packers receivers, they've got a pretty good stable there of receivers yeah. that can do some damage. So, you know, you combine that with the fact that, you know, Jordan love is having a really strong stretch here in his career. And I wonder if perhaps just maybe the Giants are going to put a little bit more focus on the passing game as opposed to the running game. Yeah, and, and if they do that, I think Matt LaFleur will say, fine, that's fine, because here's A.J. Dillon. You know, they're, we, don't know, we don't know the current situation of Aaron Jones. Um, he, he has not been even practicing so far. Um, and so we'll, we'll see there. They, they brought in Kenyon Drake um, as, a, as a, you know, a little bit of a Band-Aid solution there. But they're they're fine giving AJ Dillon 18, 20 carries if they need to. He's proven um that, that he can carry the load. So this is this is fascinating to me too, because when when you look at some of the breakdowns, and I, I always love to do this when I do my my opponent work, that this is the number one team defending tight ends in the league this year, and one of the worst team defending wide receiver ones in the league this year. Well, looks like Christian Watson is hurt um and is not going to be able to go in this game. That's their wide receiver one. And Luke Musgrave, who is their number one tight end, also hurt on IR. Tucker Craft has filled in nicely. So it's, it seems like if you're going to say, okay, stop the pass, this sets up, you know, as nicely as it can for the, the Giants defense because they don't have that guy who had really emerged the last couple of weeks, Patricia. I mean, Christian Watson had been playing really, really well these last two weeks. Um, and now it's Romeo Dobbs. It's Dontavian Wicks. It's, it's Jaden Reed, who's been... Spectacular, like Jaden Reed has been who the Giants wanted Wondell Robinson to be, and and a lot of these like smaller guys that they've brought in and to play in the slot. Jaden Reed has stepped right in and been that guy, um, but they don't have a guy that can take advantage of the fact that the Giants, at least right now, don't have that true alpha corner who can just say, "I got this guy all day." With the amount of man coverage that they play, yeah, yeah, and to, you know, just getting back to your point about the run game. We're waiting to see what happens with Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence dealing with a hamstring strain. Mm -hmm. Did not practice yesterday. Did not practice today. The hope is that he's able to practice later in the week. Of course, both teams don't have to file an injury report until Thursday. But the Giants hopeful of having Dexter Lawrence. Because listen, when he's not in there, teams, everything. Whoever, teams for running the ball go right at the spot where Dexter would be. Dexter has been that good against the run. So that's something we probably want to keep an eye on from a Giants perspective, especially against 
that Packers run running game. So, all right, coming up, we're going to give you some predictions and some final thoughts here on this crossover edition of Locked On Giants, Locked On Packers. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gift for a fussy friend or family member, you need to check out the Skylight Digital Picture Frame. Skylight is a touchscreen photo frame that you can send photos to straight from your phone, and they appear in seconds. You can even preload photos before the box is open. So when it's unwrapped and plugged in, your most treasured memories will appear. Skylight is the perfect gift for everyone. It's intuitive, takes less than 60 seconds to set up, and it's so easy to use. Easily send photos from photo to frame with the free Skylight app or unique email. And because it's a touch screen, you can swipe through to see the photos. Skylight really is a unique gift that's affordable and is sure to please your fussiest recipients. And right now, as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash locked on. Again, to get that $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash locked on. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash locked on. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked On Giants, Locked On Packers. I'm Patricia Trena of Locked On Giants. He is Peter Bukowski of Locked On Packers. And Giant fans, you will want to keep it on the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm going to have Jalen Hyatt on tomorrow's show. And I'm also going to have a little clip with Daniel Jones. I had an opportunity to speak one-on-one with Daniel Jones, who gave us an update on his uh, rehab who gave us uh, some thoughts on Tommy DeVito, who we talked about earlier in the program. And of course, Jalen Hyatt, we'll talk to him about his big breakout game and moving forward. So that's coming up on Locked On Giants this week. And Peter, what do you have coming up on Locked On Packers before we get into predictions here? Well, a familiar face for any Giants fans that want to come over and and hang out with us on our Friday Locked On Packers. Uh, New York Giants sideline reporter Madeline Burke is going to be on the program on Friday. One of my Old Sports Illustrated pals from back in the day. We go way back. She's been on the show before. Excited to talk to her. And then, of course, we'll be live Monday night um, on uh, on YouTube after the game. Uh, Excited to do that. Don't don't love late games for that reason. But look look, it'll be you know whatever midnight on the East Coast, and we'll be doing it because that's what we do here. And and we'll we're always having fun doing it. We we had our biggest live show ever on Sunday night last week, Patricia. I can't not really sure why that was. I don't know. Did something happen Sunday night. I was. I don't. I forget. I I, I, th- I thought. I think something did happen, but you know what? Good for you for doing the the, the live shows on on a night game. Everybody know. Everybody on Locked On Giants knows how I feel about night games. How I, I dislike them. But anyway, Peter, let's talk predictions. Yeah. How are you feeling about this game this weekend? So I I am someone who very much likes the analytics, um, the numbers, all all that stuff. I love the passing. I just like, I feel like teams should throw 70% of the time, most of the time. That being said, I still think games are won in the trenches and they are often also lost in the trenches. The Packers have lost playoff games because they could not block or because they could not get off blocks. And I, I just, I just believe the advantage in this game tilts, even with, even if Dexter Lawrence plays, I think the advantage tilts so heavily in the Packers favor there that I, that you know, look, they're six and a half point favorites by our friends at FanDuel on the road for a reason. NFL high, 69 sacks allowed. Nice. Uh, The pro football focus grades, the 32nd best pass blocking offensive line, 30th in run blocking. And they've also, just for good measure, been penalized 29 times for holding or a false start. Those stats from our pal Zach Cruz over at Packers Wire. If, If you can't block, that's a really big problem. And if you can't block against this Packers team, you're dead. And and you can't block with a third string quarterback. Joe Barry issues and criticisms that I have notwithstanding. I think this Packers offense is playing really well. I think this front is playing really well. And um, whether or not they can get to, you know, put some crooked number on the board, I don't know. Um, I still have a lot of respect for Wink Martindale. I have a ton of respect for Brian Dayball. This coaching staff, the job that they did last year, absolutely stellar. And I can't take anything for granted after they blew a double-digit lead to the Giants last year. But um, that Giants team is not walking through that door. And so... I think this is the kind of game that that you win, you know, 24 to 10, 
27, 14, something like that. I think the Packers win and they cover, um, that being said, you know, I, 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 I want to make it clear to, to your audience. I, I absolutely love Brian Dayball. Absolutely love the way Wink Martindale plays. Um, Saquon, I wish had never gotten hurt one of like that rookie season. I, I, I rarely have more fun watching, uh, a player than that version of Saquon. Um, and I hope he doesn't show up on the field on Monday with all due respect. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see about that. Saquon is rested. You know, he has an opportunity to to heal up that ankle. Yeah, that, we All haven't right. talked about that much. That that would be a case here for New York because they're rested. And though uh, Dayball and Wink, who again I just think are the world of um, mm -hmm. them with extra time to prepare, they've had extra time to look at what this offense <laughs> is doing. They've had extra time to look at you know finding the weaknesses in this Joe Barry defense, and they're there. Um, we'll see if Jair Alexander plays in this game. Um, that, that, I think that's the, frankly, the best case to me is that those guys just get deep in their bag and, and give the giants, you know, some sort of kitchen sink game. Um, that seems unlikely to me though, just given, given all the other hardships that they're dealing with right now. Well, the good news for the Packers is that the giants coming off the buy 18 and 24 for a 42.9% win rate. That's all time. That ranks towards the bottom of the league. Only yeah, I would Seattle, imagine. <laughs> Seattle, Cincinnati, the Jets, uh, Vegas, and Tampa Bay have worse records. Now, I'm just looking. Yeah, Pete Green Carroll Bay, famously not good off the bye. It's a weird thing. And now Green Bay, on the other hand, well, they're they're not coming off of a bye, but uh, you know, Green Bay, they're on a roll. Um, they've been playing well. Jordan Love has been playing well, and the Giants on on, on prime time games, they just don't do well. I don't know why that is. Maybe they hate them as much as I do. I don't know. But, you know, listen, Tommy DeVito has been a great story. I think, you know, he'll come out, he'll be competitive. I don't think this time, though, they're going to top the Packers. I mean, the Packers just have too much firepower. They have too much going for them. Um, they are a better team than what the Giants have faced the last two games that they played. So I could potentially see this being at least a two score game. I'm going to go a little higher, Peter. I'm going to say 30 to 13 Packers. All right. Well, uh, I got a, I got a vodka sauce recipe that I can send to you. Wonderful. I make it with chicken cutlets all the time. I don't necessarily put it on the chicken cutlet, but I'll make the cutlet and then have the, the vodka sauce pasta. And then at the end, I use the cutlet to, you know, sop up the extra sauce. It, it's it got to be crispy though. Kind oh, of crispy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That according to DeVito, that's the key. Has to be extra crispy. And I have well, a why that. bother making a cutlet if it's not going to be crispy? You know what I mean? Well, there, not a lot of people know how to make it crispy on both the top and the bottom. There's 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 actually a trick to that. And that's to put it on a on a like a, a wire rack so that air can get underneath yep. it. When so. they when they're drying. Yep. Don't put it on it, some paper towel to let it to let it, you know, get soggy. Don't do that. Yeah, Don't exactly. do that, people. Exactly. So anyway, will Tommy Cutlets be enjoying a, a nice portion of uh, chicken cutlets with vodka sauce and, and some pasta? Or will it be, you know, a heartbreak for the Giants on Monday Night Football? The Giants just don't do well uh, in primetime games. But look, that's why you show up and that's why you play the game. So we'll see if the Giants can slow down the red hot Green Bay Packers Monday night MetLife Stadium. Make sure you keep it here on Locked on Giants. Make sure you also check out Locked on Packers because we will have, obviously, one more show before the – actually, two more shows before the game. Yep. And then, of course, the live reaction from Peter on Locked on Packers. And then I'll have my show shortly thereafter on Locked on Giants. So thank you all for tuning in to this crossover edition of Locked on Giants, Locked on Packers. For Peter Bukowski, I'm Patricia Trena, and we will see you again soon, everybody.